Visit abbaeservices.com for fast medical transcription service. This podcast episode is brought to you by AB Music Creative. This episode is brought to you by Dr. Lourdes Capolong. Who wrote the lyrics of The Promise? Um, I wrote them. In fact, to talk about write, we didn't. I didn't even write them. I never wrote them. The only time I wrote them was when I was when the publishing company said we need the lyrics. I actually sang it straight to tape. So we could. I never used a pen. I, 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 I'm not really a writer, even though I can. You know, I learned it in school as well. Like, if you need a friend. Yes, that came straight out as soon as that as soon as, as soon as that piano part came out. And there's a toss up between who made who made that piano part. So we 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 like to say that we all. Uh, contributed to that piano part. So Michael, Andrew, myself, all wrote that piano part because we all had these melodies on our, in our heads and it came from a conglomeration of melodies. So that came after the drums and the bass was programmed. And so that inspired, because that if you listen to the melody of that, it's if you need a friend, that melody, oh. that's what it's... Ins- that's what that's what inspired that yeah. lyric. So as soon as they and we were running it and running it and running it over and over and over, and I just come. If you need a friend, don't look to a stranger. You know, in the end, you'll always, I'll always be there. And when you're in doubt, when you're in danger, take a look all around. And I'll be there. And then straight into the chorus as well. And that was written straight away. So, and I'm lazy in that respect. I'm not a writer. I don't, I don't you know, it takes too long for me to write stuff down. I'd rather just record it. Yeah. I work exactly like that now. Jay-Z does the same thing. Yeah. Yeah. In fact, it, in fact if I'll write a, 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 just a tune and I'll just go, and then put some kind of melody to it, right. uh, and it, uh, and then work on it and keep working on it, and, and go, oh, th- yeah, that inspired that lyric, and that'll, uh, or, and, and it's always something that comes directly into my head. It's imp- it's kind of improvised writing, if you like. But the the great thing about the promise was that I once I'd done that, we sent it down to Andrew by tape. There was no internet back then. Remember, there was no. MP3s over that, that, that takes seconds to go to Australia. We had to send stuff by post. So we had this demo that had the first chorus on it. and the You pro- and Michael. Yes. Uh-huh. Me and Mike had got this. Uh, we'd recorded it directly to a TIAC machine. Yeah. Um, and in this little garden shed, which I've t- I, the last time I was there, I took pictures of it because we're, we're actually making a, we're actually in the process of making a movie. So some of that will be moved into the movie and stuff. So the, the original garden shed's still there where we wrote The Promise. And it's so small that we had to have the keyboards. Like, for instance, the key, the, uh, we didn't, of course, we didn't have a drum machine, a drum kit. But the keyboards were actually nailed to the wall. So you had flat. to do it. We played like that. ninety degrees. Yeah. Yes, and the mixing desk was as well. So we we mixed it that way as well. So um, as far as the lyrics are concerned, I just sang that straight through a a rolling Roland RE five hundred one tape echo, which is a a weird. I've actually got the plug in version, which is just as good. Uh, uh, we had the proper uh, hardware version. It, it, the lid comes up. The, the gadget man again. So. You, you take the lid off this thing and it, you have a cartridge and it has about 100 yards of tape in this cartridge. Sheesh. And it runs on a chrome bed. Yeah. So you put it around the five recording heads. And it just goes, yeah. And it just goes around the, this thing. So it loops. And, oh, yeah. So you, you it, has the, it has a record head, an erase head, another record head, another erase right. head, and then another recording head. So you can actually um, program it to record on the first head or, and erase on the second head. So it, it won't. But it gives you the, all, all the reggae tune, you know, you, yeah. all, all the big reggae tunes that have got the, uh, the big yeah, echoes on them is, is that, is that machine. So we were running the vocal right through that straight to the desk, uh, mixed it on the desk vocals, uh, the first verse chorus down to Andrew. And I, th- I believe, and I, I, I have said this before, Andrew got the record deal on just the first verse and the chorus, and then he wrote the second verse. So and Mike, Andrew wrote the second verse. So I wrote the first verse and the chorus, Andrew wrote the second verse. So he, he wrote the part, the, uh, when your day is through, and so is your temper. And that was his voice on that as well. So we wrote, uh, we, we wrote the songs <clears throat> and sang them like we wrote them. So The Promise was writ- written 
it, uh, and, and sung the way that we wrote them. And the Heaven Knows was as well, even though that's a double chorus, a double vocal right from the off, Heaven Knows, because that we decided it's a great idea to try and put the two vocals in together because it does sound good. Although the newer songs now, we, it starts with, I, I'll open the song and then Andrew comes in pretty much like the Walker Brothers style, you know, so that you yeah. get that really nice, rich harmony yeah. coming in.